Hi, everyone. Be right with you. I'm just getting my comments up now. Let's see here. There we go. I have my comments up. Getting a few last minute things done before I pop on the camera. So let me see here. We got, get this out of the way. All right, I haven't, let me put the uh, camera on and say a proper hello. Let's see here. Hi, everybody. So welcome. Got a little bit of, there we go. So welcome to uh, Genomi Live. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist. And today is our zip pouch of the month at number two for February. We did one of these back and uh, in January, and now we're doing our fe February one. Now, typically I post the notes for this before class, but I had a few things happening today, so they're not posted yet. They will be posted right after class. Um, I could try to do it while I'm working with you guys, but sometimes I can't do two things or three things at the same time. So um, let me just see here. Because I'm still, I still wanted to go through and make sure I have it correct. Um, and what I'm doing is we're going to use what we had from last month as our base. And then I'm going to show you some changes because on this one, I want to show you how to add a lining, add up outside pocket. Um, we're also going to put some uh, zipper tabs in there or zipper. I call them zipper covers. I don't know if that's the real name, but uh Oh no, Susan broke her arm. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Um, so anyways, but you know, Susan, you can save these. And once your arm is well, you can start again. Um, so anyways, I have my camera set up. I can't quite see it here. Let me see if I turn this a little bit. Nope, my camera's out of the way. All right, so you can't see it, but that's all right. It's set up because we're going to be at the machine a little bit. So as I said, I was going to show you how to add a lining to your piece. And let me get my sample. Hold on, it's right here behind me. Now this is what it's gonna look like when you're all done, okay? Not these fabrics, looks like a water bottle, doesn't it? You know, one of those hot water bottles? All right, and then when we get it done, and I'm gonna show you all the layers, when you get it done, you're going to open it through here. And what you're going to do there's a couple layers in there. You have to find the right one. This layer right here is the backing of my bag, okay? The back side of my bag. And then this is the, the inner lining. So in here, I'm going to open it between the backing, which is on this side, and the blue part, which is the front of my bag. So I'm, how I'm going to do that, I'm, I'm going to show you how this looks first. And then we're going to talk about it. And then after that, I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to create one with you so that you can be, find this easier to do. And um, I have my, my other computer up with the directions. They're not really directions. They're just guidelines. And what I'm doing in the guidelines is I'm showing you step by step just what all the parts are. Like number one is the placement line for the fabrics. And number two is the zipper placement box. Number three is the upper tack down. Some of those things. So you know they, you can take what you had from last month and repurpose a lot of it into this. So let me get this all turned. Now I use funky fabrics when I'm working like this. I just grab things out of my scrap bag and I throw them together because I want to keep some of my good fabrics for other things. So when you first turn it, it's going to look like this, okay? So here's, this is the backing of my fabric, the back of my bag. All right. There's, I put a little tab on there too, just one tab. And then on this side, you can see I didn't put a zipper in. I'm just, I don't want to sew a zipper in because I'm just sampling. I want to sample all the sizes, make sure it's all working correctly before I put a zipper in. So I'm going to do a complete one with all of you. This down here is my pocket, which actually goes to the back. And what happens is you take this part, and because it has that channel, you know how I like to use that channel, you can stuff all this in here. It's gonna be all 
inside the inner parts of the bag. You won't even see it on the inside. You would finish that off however you please. This is how I'll finish it off. I'll just leave it there and I'll flip this over. And then my pocket will cover that. There's the pocket on the back. I have to turn this kind of sideways. The pocket covers that. It's all inside there. I could finish that off. And then on this side, this is your what your bag looks like. Now I'm going to open this part right up here. This is where your zipper normally would be. And you would open your zipper. If I had, oh, here we go. Uh, and I got pins magnetized. Okay. And then you would open your zipper. We're going to pretend that I'm opening my zipper so I can show you what the inside looks like because it's all neat and tidy. Hang on. Here we go. So this is for me, I like doing bags sometimes this way because then I can see what's happening. I have all the parts in there. If I've done something the wrong way, I can fix it before I have a zipper in there. And then I got to take the zipper, you know, peel the zipper out and all of that. So when I was talking about those uh, pieces called, I'm calling them zipper covers. Wait a minute. How come it's, it seems to be, that is so weird. It's like when I hold that up, it takes, hang on a second. What is going on with my camera? There's these little green spots. Oh, you know what it is? I bet it's because they're green <laughs> and I have like a green screen on this. So where you see this opening right here, that's a little, that's a little cover for your, um, it goes over the ends of your zipper. So you don't have any messy zipper, but I have a green screen thing. So it's showing. That is so bizarre, isn't it? Let me look at my comments. Are you guys doing okay? Ah, uh, yeah, I can't multitask either. So let me show you inside. So inside I have, this is the lining. I have a cream, I have a purple lining on the front and this part up here is lined. And also this part is lined. But look in there, there are no seams. They're all enclosed in the bag, okay? So it does make your bag a little stiffer. And I did use a uh, poly mesh uh, uh, stabilizer. So it's so it is a bit softer, but it's got, um, you know, several layers of fabric. So the back is really two layers. You know, all these parts are two layers. Okay. So let me, I don't know if I have another one. I do not. So that's weird about these green things. That is weird. They're, they look blue right now. It's, it's right here next to this white part on this side. It's just those little flaps. I don't know what you call them. Some, uh, sometimes when you're making a bag, you know, you fold that little two inch square over and over and you cover the end of your zipper. We're, we do it right in the hoop. So I'm going to show you that when we get to it. All right. So let me, I'm going to put the software on so I can show you if, what I'm talking about. I'm so excited. I don't know if you can tell today. I'm just so excited about all of this. All right, let me get everything situated here. I don't know why we have this so big and I'm gonna zoom back out. All right, that's what our final looks like. But first I'm gonna show you over here on my USB stick, uh, which is called No Name. I have my January folder and in my January folder, I have the zip pouch that we made Oh, some directions. And then, so this is my uh, zipper, my zipper base. So I save that. So each time I can just pull that up. I pulled up, I just pulled this whole thing up this time and changed the parts that I wanted to. So I'm going to go over here and I call this my zip pouch five inch base because it's about five and a, and a half inches wide by, let's see, we'll check on this one. And it's about six inches this way. It's, it's small. I had it in this one. Let's see. Let's see. I had it in here. So it's a little wider. This is my SQ28 hoop. So I just wanted to do my stitching in the smaller hoop. So let me just show you all the parts and what they're called and how I do them. And then we'll, I'll take it to the machine and I'm going to stitch the parts for each of you to see. Does that make sense to everyone? Let's see if anybody's, everybody looks good. Okay, so, and it's weird. I have two 
laptops up and two mouse pads and I, of course like two mouses and I keep grabbing for the wrong one. So here we go. Let me boot that back. Maybe that would help. All right. So the first thing you're going to start with is that outside shape. And I have it selected here in my sequence menu. And I'm actually going to change this to the parts so we can see all the parts. This little tab changes it from any the color palette. So if there were things that followed each other that were yellow or whatever, they I could um, group them together if I wanted to. So this would stitch first, and this is the placement line. This is the line that everything, all my fabrics have to reach that far, at least that far. And then actually my outer fabric needs to go a little further because I make the channel. But this gives me, you know, an idea of where all the inner stuff has to go. Then of course, I stitch that box. That's for the zipper placement. And I would put this in and then I would lay my zipper in there and then I would stitch it. And what I'm doing is I'm going to stitch the top of my zipper down first. And my zipper is right side up. And I'm going to stitch the lower side of that zipper. And then I'm going to start with some things with these things on the side. So I'm starting on the left. And I don't really need this line. This is the placement line for that tab I'm going to put on the side, the zipper cover. I could just align my fabric right here with the edge of my, uh, the, that black line would be fine too. But I put a little uh, reminder in here uh, that I need it. So it's going to stitch that. And then I'm going to lay my fabric down so it goes this way. And it'll stitch it down, which is number six. And then I'll flip it over. And you'll see that when we go to the machine. So it's hard. I'm sure some of you are thinking, ooh, she's talking a weird language. But, you know, I'm talking zipper pouches. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Placement line. I'll place my fabric. I'll stitch my fabric down. My fabric's going to face right side down. And it's a two. I'm using a two-inch square. And then after this line stitches, I flip it back. And I hold it to the side with like a piece of tape. Then... I'm going to start adding my fabrics. So this line, and I didn't even have to recreate a new line for this. I just reorganized it because I want to do all my stuff at the top part of my bag and then move to the bottom part of my bag. You can do it in any order you like. Um, you don't even have to do it this way at all. You might have a better way. I don't know. So this is the tack down line for my upper fabrics, both my outside fabric and my lining fabric. So I'm going to lay my lining on the back of the hoop and I'm going to line it with my zipper my zipper box here and it'll be right sides down and I'll, I'll tape it, flip my hoop back, I'll tape down my top fabric, align it, tape it, and then I'll stitch it. Once I stitch it, I'm going to take the front one and flip it up to the top. And the reason I'm doing the, just the front one is I want to embroider up here. All right. And today I'm just, I just have a placeholder. I put EMB in there for you guys to see. So it will give you an idea of that's where you take your break. So before I get to the embroidery, I have another line to stitch. This line will hold down that top fabric for me when it goes this way. Especially if you're going to embroider on it, you want to secure it. So that'll hold it down. And then look what comes up next, my embroidery. So I would embroider, I could embroider something there if I want. That's all optional, but that's where I would place it. And then I would take my back fabric and flip it up so it covers the embroidery part on the back so I don't have any of that showing inside my bag. And I will finish it with this bean stitch. If you can see here, I have the bean stitch. And let me just zoom in. You can kind of see the bean stitch. So the bean stitch will stitch through the top fabric and the lining. And I think I have that. I can show you that in my bag. Hang on one second. I'm going to put the camera back. Let's see here. There we go. So here's that bean stitch. Okay. And then when you lift it up, I have it in white. So in my notes, I mentioned you may want to go to a matching bobbin thread, or maybe at this point you want a matching bobbin thread. I don't know. Or you just want to use whatever's in your bobbin to do that. It's really up to you. 
I forget to change sometimes. I, it just depends on, you're coming from the embroidery up here and then you're gonna be doing this stitch. Okay, so it secures the lining and your top fabric really nicely. And then you'll start working on that bottom part down here. Okay, very much the same. I'm gonna switch back to the software. Now, if you have comments, please put them in the, in the comments over here and I'll answer them as best I can. We may have Miriam today. I don't know if she's watching. Um, she's down in, you know, she's in Atlanta and that's where the um, uh, QuiltCon is happening. So I don't know which day she's heading over to QuiltCon. So now I'm going to start, let me get this inner window out of my way and get this out of my way. You can't see any of this stuff that's in my way. Now I did, I did this. Now I'm going to start on the bottom part. And the first line, let me back out. The first line is where I'm going to lay, before I stitch it, I'm gonna lay my bottom top, my bottom fabric for the front and my lining fabric on the back and stitch it down. And then I, and of course it goes up this way, you'll see. Then I'm gonna fold the front fabric down and secure it down here. Let's see if I zoom out a little bit. So it'll be secured at the bottom. So I can do my embroidery. And so I would put some kind of embroidery in there. If I want, you don't have to. All right, after that goes, gets, we get to some fun parts. After those are on, um, I will do that decorative stitch. I'm, I'm using the bean gap. Oh yes, and there is, you can definitely watch the replay. It's all saved to this page. Plus I'm gonna move it over to the um, artistic digitizer page underneath guides. It has its own little guide. So the bottom and the top now are all finished. Over here, I put a placement. Well, actually this is, let me see what's there. This is my stitch down line for that little ribbon I'm gonna put on the side. And I'm gonna put a D-link on there. So I'm gonna show you that. And then I have these lines right here. They're 18, 19, 20, and 21. What these are, and they sit over here, they're like this. Here's 18 and 19 oops, 18 and 19. They are, I made a little cross here, kind of. This is where when you put your pocket on, you apply your pocket to the front and it folds to the back. Um, you want your pocket to line up the top of it right here. And so I put those in. Now to get those even across, you can create one, create your X and then uh, duplicate it. And then just use your arrow keys and your arrow key will slide it all the way across and keep it in line for you. So you'll have those to stitch. There's the, these four. There they are. So those will stitch. And then here's my pocket like this, that nice U. And now let me show you how I created that pocket. So let's go to the top. I took this shape up here. I like to use things that I have already, it's easier. And I copy and pasted it so it's down at the bottom. And I'm just going to grab it and I'm gonna pull it to the side so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna delete it because I don't, I don't need it. But I want to um, cut this so that I can have a pocket. And um, so, yeah, so when you do an update, um, some of your previous things you even have in the software, you may have to redo again. Updates just end up doing that when you have computer updates. So right now, um, what I would like to do is I'd like to do split outline on this, but I don't, I, when I click on nodes, let's see what happens. Whoops, nodes. And can I, I can't click on this. It only gives me these shape nodes. So I do need to come up to my, let's go off of that and go to selection. I need to come up here to convert, or I can right click. Well, maybe if it'll let me do that. Oh, okay, let's do it this way. Convert to curves, I did a right click. And now I can collect on edit nodes and I can, I can click here and here to cut it in half. But of course I need it to be straight. So I'm gonna go get my guide and I'm just gonna drag a guide across there and you know however big i want my pocket i will i can put that 
whoops, let me get it in place. Well, you know, once you get it where you need it, there you go. So I have my line, hit select, and then I can select my piece, edit nodes, and I could just put my cursor here and right click, split outline, right click again, split outline, come up here to select, right click, break apart, and then click off of it and you'll see this part here. I don't need, so let me, I'm gonna move it up to show you. I would delete that part. Let me see, delete, yeah, delete, delete, there we go. Maybe it won't let me delete till I get rid of my, that, there we go. So I have two parts. I can delete the part I don't want somehow if it, somehow things aren't working, I don't know why. Let's see, delete will work here, there we go. So this will be what'll hold my pocket down. My pocket, I'm gonna put down with a fold so I don't have to finish this edge. You could have a fabric, maybe you embroidered something that you, you know, sometimes we have these embroideries hanging around. You could repurpose one of those. Um, I folded my fabric over so that it's nice on both sides. Um, you want a finished pocket. So you would do that before you bring it to your, bring it to here. So this is a great spot to put one of those embroideries that you stitched out that you sampled, but then you didn't use it or I don't know, something. A lot of times I go places and I stitch stuff and then I just throw it in my bag and I can use it at other times. So that would need to go, I'm gonna go back up. That would need to go right here after your placement lines would be uh, your pocket tack down. And that's how I created the pocket. Not hard at all, really. I just used some of what was there. The hard part is is in the hoop, is when you make it in the hoop to understand where everything goes. All right, and then after that stitches, I'm going to lay my back fabric, which is the back of my bag, right sides down. And I take my hoop off and on the hoop, right sides down, I'm going to put my lining fabric. And it will stitch those together like that. And then of course I added this little, you know, I like that little finishing stitch. I added the finishing stitch so that when I trim, I can trim right up close to this. And even though, you know, I don't even need to do this actually because it's all inside. So I could, I could say, no, I don't want to do that. And maybe when I do this today, I won't do it today. But you can, do, you can leave that in if you want. But no one's going to see it because it actually goes inside between the lining and your bag and you never see it. It's just, I thought it was magic. All right. So what I'm going to do is let's go back over here to me. And I will set up my camera. Let's see. Here we go. All right. How's everyone doing with that? I kind of rushed through, but I just wanted to really show you those extra parts. And really, I want you to see it stitching because I think that's the important part so you know where everything goes. In the directions, I've just written the order of stitching and I've made some notes next to it like placement line for fabrics. Uh, let me see one of my notes that I wrote in here. And I'll put these up after I get done. Uh, what happened today? <laughs> My family wanted to take me to lunch and I had some things I had to get done. Um, so like for the zipper cover placement left side, I tell you how to place the fabric. So you'll have some guideline notes between my notes and my video. You should be golden and be able to do this without an issue. All right. So let me see where my camera's at. We'll put this up over here. And here's the camera. All right. That's not a bad view. And I'm going to move my chair so it's a little noisy. Hopefully it won't be too noisy to get it out of the way so I don't bang into it. And uh, let me bring my iPad over so that I can still see my comments. And hopefully I'll be able to check on that from time to time. All right. So in my hoop, let me get my accoutrement out of the way. Uh, here we go. Um, I did hoop up my stabilizer. Now this hoop, it doesn't quite hold well on the sides. And you, I don't think the clips, because there's no magnets there, these probably will not hold that. So I know that won't work. So one of the things I do is I will take 
a pin and I will put it across like that. Let me make sure we can see this. So like that. You can use T-pins. I really think T-pins work a lot better. So you can put a couple pins on here um, in different spots to hold it there. There is a product, I have to get it. There is a product I can put on my, my hoop to help uh, a gripper that will help grip it a little better. I should really get that, I just haven't. So for this project, it's not so, so important, but if I was em embroidering something else, you know, it could pull in because it's not so secure on these edges. All right, so I'm going to put this um, underneath my foot and attach it. And we're going to see what's happening over here. Uh, the first thing that's going to stitch, and I think you guys can see a little bit of my screen. There you go. Um, the first thing that's going to stitch, and I have chosen one thing at a time, it's going to stitch that outer box. So let me get my machine going, and I'll bring my camera a little closer, and maybe I can tip it down a bit. Let's see. I don't want it to fall over. Here we go. So there it is, it's stitching. This is the box that all my fabrics need to reach beyond. Okay, that's the, that placement. And then I need a little extra at the bottom when I get to the closing. There we go. And let me see if I can get this. My camera is heavy for this holder. Let's see what's happening here. Which way are you going? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, okay. So I'm using, um, this is a poly mesh stabilizer. It's actually um, a fusible. It has an iron on shiny side, but it's um, poly mesh. It's great for, I think for these types of bags because it's soft. And, um, you know, I used to use tear away sometimes and tear away is fine, but your bags crinkle a little bit. Sometimes you can't get that stabilizer out. All right, so the next thing that's going to stitch, we moved along, is the placement box for my zipper. There we go. And then I am going to put my zipper in there. I'm going to get these threads out of the way. There we are. All right. I'm going to tape my zipper. Now, I have a zipper that is really long. Look at ah, woo, It goes on for days. <laughs> but that's okay. I end up using these other pieces. I didn't have a shorter one. Uh, these other pieces for doing uh, zip tabs and things like that. I, I use all of it. And I do like a longer zipper because I can place it here and put the head of the zipper out of my way for now. I'm going to have to move it back, but I can tape it in here just like this so it doesn't move. And uh, then I can trim it to wherever I need it. Okay. So let me get my good tape because I have, I was using a bit of scotch tape for my, my trials. Okay. Now you could use a tape to stick this down under here. You, you want to use a tape that you can sew through or you're going to gum up your needle. So make sure if you're um, using some kind of sticky tape under there, like Wonder Tape or those kind of things, make sure it's sew throughable so that you don't gum up your needle because then you'll be cleaning that and, and it's kind of a pain in the neck. All right, so I'm going to put this one over here. All right, get that all in there. All right. And remember last month we measured and these zippers are about an inch wide and I know my, hopefully my, this will line up for it. Here we go. We're going to tack down the top part of my zipper. Now this section could be done combined. I have it separated into two steps and, um, but you can actually combine it. So it stitches one and then goes right to the other one. If you want to, you don't have to have it separate. I just have it separate so that I can show everyone. Sometimes, depending on your machine, um, having 
the machine stop and then travel is better because then you don't run into things. And now I can take this tape off here because I don't need the tape there. I'll save it and I don't need the tape here. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to leave my, um, I'm not going to leave this up, up here for, for, because I'm going to put my zipper covers on. So what I need to do is this, this red thread does not cut well. It makes really long tails. I have like lots of red thread everywhere. I am going to open this up carefully and move it into the middle here so it's out of the way. And what's going to stitch now is that placement line for my uh, side tab, my, my zipper cover as I'm calling it. There we go. Let me see what else. Oh, yeah, I know when the, when the computer makes its own changes. Um, yeah, so this is going to be my uh, tab for the side. It's much bigger than I need. It's a two inch square. I don't need it that big. Uh, and it, it has no right and wrong side, but you would put right side down. And I'm just going to lay it over that line just like this. It's much bigger than we need, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. And then I'm just going to put it there. I could tape it if I want, but I'm going to keep my fingers over here, way out of the way. There we go. And this pin is about, there we go. Make sure that doesn't fall out. And I would just flip this back like that. Give it a finger press. All right. And then if I wanted to, I could tape it up over here on the side to keep it out of the way. I just want to make sure. There we go. Now this one is going to give me the placement line on this side. You want to make sure you're using plastic zippers so that you don't have a problem running over that metal. If you, if you have a metal zipper, you have to change how you do this because you can't stitch over that metal. You really should not. All right, and then this one is gonna go here like so, just covering that line, and it's gonna get stitched down and folded back just like the other side. And then I am going to trim this extra zipper away because it's just going to get in my way as I move around. So I'm just going to cut it off there. And what I do with these sometimes is I will pull it apart. Maybe sometimes. There we go. And then I put it together like this with the zipper teeth out. And I'll stitch it together and then you can loop it over like this and make nice little tabs. So if you're ever in a class with me and we're doing zippers, if you don't save these yourself, I take them home because I use them for a lot of different things. All right. So I have my, I'm going to take this one and fold it back. So now those are in place. The next thing that's going to uh, stitch is the line that holds the upper and lower fabrics. I'm just going to check. Yep. It, I mean, it holds my upper fabric and my uh, lining fabric. All right. So this is going to be my upper fabric on the outside, the Janome print. And on the inside, I'm going to put my polka dots. Go figure. I know. And I want to attach the back one first. And hopefully I can get my hoop out of here without moving the camera too much. Oh, I'm going to move a little bit. And I'm going to flip my hoop over like that. There we go. And I want to lay my fabric so that the bulk of it is down this way. And I'm going to align it with the top edge of that zipper box, just like that, right there. And then I can put a little piece of tape on the side like this. And I could put one on the other side too. I try to put them outside where I'm going to stitch so that uh, they don't get caught in there. So that's going to stay there. Once I sew it down, you'll see how it works. Oh, I have tape up here from before. There we go. Let's move that. All right, I'm going to put this back in. This is where you have to be careful flipping back and forth with your hoop that you don't dislodge something. And I'm going to move that back in because it's not staying where it should. And then I'm going to put on 
this fabric. This is going to be up here eventually. So I'll put it right side down right here. And it's going to line up with the top of the zipper right there. Or maybe a little bit further, just so that I know I have it covered. And I'm going to start up and let it stitch. My zipper head should be okay right there. Because I think my line is far enough away. Yep, there we go. Let me check here for comments. We're doing good. And then I'm just going to put up this part. Because if I was going to embroider, remember I had that section, I'll show you my screen. If I was going to embroider, um, I want to embroider on this without getting it on my lining. So I'm going to put a line up here to hold this fabric nice and tight for me so that when I go to embroider, it will keep it nicely secured. So if I was going to embroider, it would start embroidering in there. And uh, you can see on my screen when I flip over here, it's right up here, you can see this is what's going to stitch. It says EMB. So that's where you would put your embroidery if I was going to embroider, but I'm not. I'm just going to move ahead one. And this is where the uh, bean stitch is going to be, that um, nice decorative stitch. But I need to take my hoop off, move my camera, and flip to the back, Un untape these back pieces, and flip up my lining like that. Ooh, and see what I got caught in there. Even we have these issues, but it's only stabilizer, so I'm not worried. There we go. Let's just get that out of the way. Could have been fabric, you know. Then I'm gonna that's why you use tape for your fabric. So then I'm gonna bring this up, give it a nice finger press to hold it in place. Some people keep like a little iron and this is uh, fusible. So I have to be careful what I iron with this because um, I might fuse it in the wrong place. So I don't usually press as I'm going. I use a finger, I use my finger to hold things in place. So I'm gonna give that a little pull, hold it here. Yeah, there's a lot of threads caught in it, but flip that that way. So we're gonna flip back over. And now we're going to do that decorative stitch across here. And you can see those zipper tabs or zipper covers are, hold, are at the ends of my zipper, holding it all in place. Put that up there. All right. So now it's going to do across here that bean stitch. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there? Oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. My machine said I'm not hanging in there. What the heck? All right, so let's lock this and let's re-thread, see what's going on with this. Here we go. Uh, no, I'm good, okay. Oh, it's got, it wants me to move my hoop for threading, okay. There we go. And then I just hit the uh, lock button and then It'll, it says, keep hands clear, carriage will not move. And it goes back to its spot. I'm just going to move this tail a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to let it go from here. Let's see what happens. And I'll just trim this little extra. There we go. And then once that's done, I'm going to do the lower part in much the same way. So I suggest you try it first with, you know, sample fabrics. You Remember, you don't have to put a zipper in here. You can pretend so you don't use a zipper. That's all right. All right, I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put the backing fabric on first, The I mean the lining back in there first because it's on the back side. Let's flip this over. There we go. All right, so you can see I've got that upper lining. If I had embroidered, it covers up the embroidery. This one is going to sit here like this, lines up with that zipper, the edge of the zipper, 
like that. Let me fold that back so we don't get it caught again. And I'm going to put tape right there. I'm going to move this down and put tape right there. I'm going to flip it back over carefully, making sure nothing flips back under the hoop. There we go. If you're using smaller fabrics, I would use a little extra tape to make sure it stays where, it's, where you need it up there. This one is going to go right side down on here. And it goes, sorry, it goes up this way. This is where people get lost, even myself, to remember which way they go. This one's going to be tacked down right here along the edge of the zipper, like that. And here we go. Let me just put my foot down. There we go. That hold that as I see where everything is. Okay, looks good. Do be careful. Ooh, you... uh, that. What happened here? What did I get? Oh, it got caught on that long thread. Okay. Ooh, let's see what happened. Oh my gosh, these pins are driving me crazy today. They're all magnetized. All right, let's see what's going on. Uh, 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 uh. Are you all laughing? You're all going, oh my God, what's Ann going to do? Well, this side is in still, so I can pull it back this way. Let's see what's happening. Pull that up. I'm trying not to move anything too much. I'm going to flip this back in here. Let me get this pin out of the way. And let me get it back in here and see. I think we're going to be close. Because this side didn't pop out, just the one side. Because I caught it soon. Let's put it back in there. Okay, there we go. Now, I had to figure out what did it get caught on. All right, maybe it's that zipper. So I'm going to move the zipper over. There we go. It might have got caught there, but I'm going to check underneath here just to be sure. Raise that up higher see what happened. Oh, no, I think it was getting caught on that zipper head. So you just have to be careful. That's all in your line placement. So you want to be careful about where your lines are. And um, I could have put it closer. It's kind of far up on my um, zipper. Let us see if I can get that in the camera well. So I could have put it closer. I probably should put it lower there so it doesn't get so close to the zipper head. But I caught it. This is why sometimes you have to stay at your machine and tend to them. Let's see. We'll, we'll do our best. We'll see if this works out. It might be slightly wonky. Uh, and I'm going to back up a bit. All right. Let's see what happens. Get everybody lined back up. Let's move that zipper some more this way. There we go. Okay. I have to lean over the camera, so it's really, it's like a, being a contortionist. All right, here we go. All right, phew, everybody like going up, phew. Save the day, there we go. All right, and again, on this one, if I wanted to do embroidery, I would flip this, just the uh, top piece down. And down here, I'd pull this down snug and let the machine tack it in place. Now, one thing I want to remind everyone, the only machine we have that uh, can read your hoop is the CM17. All of our other machines, they do not know whatever hoop you put in. Okay, they don't, when you snap it in, wherever you snap it, they don't know. You have to make sure you're looking on the screen to make sure that you're putting the right hoop on your machine. Okay, so make sure you're doing that because you don't want to put this small hoop on and have a big design and it's just gonna come over and crash into your hoop. So you don't want to have that happen. That's my public service announcement today. So I thought I would give you that. This is where that embroidery would go. And on the screen of my machine, you can see it's kind of, it's kind of yellow right here. I would be doing my embroidery. Just my placeholder. 
actually, I think I'm pretty ingenious coming up with that placeholder. I just, I don't know, it just came to me. So I'm going to move ahead because I do not want to do that. And now this is where it's going to uh, tack down my uh, loop with my D-ring. So I'm going to, oh wait, no, it's not. It's going to do the, uh, that decorative stitch like we did up here. But I have to first bring down here my back fabric, my lining. So my lining has to be undone. Hang on. And flip down. Let me lay this down carefully. Pull it down. This looks like it's a bag for Minnie Mouse or something. I don't know. Let me put tape right there. All right, flip it back. Here we go. So you can see if you embroidered, your lining would cover that. So you have a nice clean inside of your bag, which I really like. This big tail is in my way. Let's cut that off. There we go. All right, put this under here. Get that under there. I do have some long tails. This red thread, for some reason, I don't know what it is, very silky, and it doesn't it cuts but then it doesn't like to release there we go all right so now i'm going to do that uh, decorative thread so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to stitch a little bit of it and then i'm going to stop and move my zipper head so i moved it back here so i'm going to let that stitch a little bit and we'll see if there's any comments hi Dee. Dee. all right i'm going to stop it there and then I'm gonna move the zipper to this side. There we go, there we go. I almost got distracted. That's easy for me, I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> Aren't these bags fun? And every month I'll be showing you something new, uh, some either a technique or something to add to your bag as we go along and they may get uh, more difficult. You can move this back here if you want. You don't actually have to for this bag, but there it goes. Now it's going to stitch the, uh, where I wanna, it's gonna stitch my little loop down over here. And what I have for that is I have, I'm gonna put a split ring uh, on there. And I'm also gonna, I have a piece of ribbon that I cut, here's my ribbon. So I'm going to put my split ring on there. I really wanted a D ring, but I couldn't find my D ring. This has to go to the inside and I'm gonna lay it right here. My, I'm gonna put the edge of my ribbon right here. It's a little bit, I, let me see, I can feel, where's the edge of that bag? Yeah, so if I put my, if I stick it like this, in, I'm gonna go in about a quarter inch beyond that. If I put it here, when I finish, it'll be out of the way. And I definitely want to take my tape and I want to tape this down. I don't want that moving. I don't, these threads are going to, are everywhere and nowhere all at once. Oof. All right. And I'm going to tape this thing over back over here. Now you don't have to put a little tab, but I thought I'd put a tab and then um, get my tape here. Let's see. Let's get that lined up where I want it. I know I'll get it crooked. I'm, I'm always getting things crooked. So I'm gonna put tape on this side first. Right there. Oh, that should hold it. There we go. All right, it's gonna stitch that down. It'll get caught again in the seam. There we go. I just want to keep this part just up out of the way of getting in any harm. All right, so now it's at the part where it's going to mark where my pocket goes. So we'll do that. And I just made like a little, a little X there. You might be able to eyeball where you want it. It's all up to you. This will be in the seam allowance anyway, so it won't show. All 
right, I'm going to have to massively clean up thread off the floor tonight. It's everywhere. There we go. All right, so I have those two lines, and I'm going to take, this is my pocket. I folded this edge so it's open down here. Oh, if I could open it, there we go. So it has the same inside and out. But if you had a fabric, if you had something you embroidered, I do have some embroidered pieces that I do at shows. A lot of times I'll put up some of the um, shashiko designs and I'll just stitch them. They That would be a nice uh, uh, embroidered pocket. And I could actually, you know, put a second fabric back here with my sewing, make it on my sewing machine before I come over here. So uh, you would line it up covering those little X's because that's where the top, and I can see where my needle is if I bring this down. Yeah, my needle's going to go. That's where the top of the bag sits, right at the top of those X's. So you can line it up there. I know I can feel it right down here that it's, it goes beyond the uh, bottom of the bag, which is good. And I'm just, I don't really need to uh, tape this one because it's starting right there. This is all, the seam is all going to be in the seam allowance. So you won't see it later. There we go. All right. So there's lots of things that you could do with this pocket. The thing to remember is this is the inside of your pocket when you flip it to the back. This will be the outside of your pocket. All right. So make yourself attempt when you do make your sample one, like I made that sample one I showed you here. Okay. So when this is uh, on there, all right, when this is, when this is turned this way, just like I stitched it. Okay. It's on there like that. When I, this is what you see, but now when I flip it back, this is going to be the side that you see. So you might want to do a, do one with a little X on it. So you know where the X is and you know, you've done it correctly in your sample. All right. So now it's going to do, I need to lay my back fabric and my lining. So I'm going to take this out one last time. I'm going to make sure that tape is holding. I'm going to flip over, and you can see, let me see if I can get this in the camera. You can see I have my two pieces in here. That one is in the, where it came out of the, there it is, out of the hoop. There we go. And so back here, my lining is the polka dot. So I'm going to lay polka dot to polka dot, like that. And it's... A, I made it extra big, so uh, we don't, you don't have to make it this big. You can measure and do your pieces a little bit closer to the sizes you need. So I'm just going to tape it up at the top because it should stay in place. It's extra big. I can flip it this way, and I can kind of look under here yep, to make sure it's laying okay. That's why you want to make sure that you tape it is that if this is not laying correctly, if this folds under, I would have an issue up here. And I can see, when I look at my top corner, I can see the top of that. And I can see it on this side as well. So I'm gonna hook that in. And then I'm gonna take my backing fabric, this is my back of my bag, and I'm going to lay it right side down, covering everything. Let's see, my zipper head's in there. I have my zipper head in the middle, I have, that piece over here for my D ring is out of the way. I'm just going to lay this piece right up on top. It, it's extra sized. So, you know, when I'm working with the camera, it's much easier to go big than to go smaller. I'm just going to take that pin out now. There we go. All right. And it's going to do two rows. It's going to do the first row is the seam line. And then the next row will be the finishing. And then I'll trim it for you. We're going to go long today. Are we going long? Maybe. We're going to be long. All right. Hopefully everybody's okay with that. So there we go. I'm excited about this bag. And then... And I'm actually not going to have it do the last one. It will do that finishing stitch. I'll show you what it looks like. We'll do a little bit of it, but I'm not going to do it. We'll 
it'll save us a little bit of time. So it's going to do this little bit of a, like a zigzaggy stitch here and do my finishing. And I'll just stop it there. I don't really need it because it's going to be on the inside of the inside. Does that make sense? All right, so it's all done. I'll show you that little bit of stitching. If I was going to have raw edges, I'd definitely do this little part. Okay, so let me unhoop it. I'm going to turn the camera back on me. And, um, oh, I got a lot. That, th that thread is going to be the, you know, it's all stuck. There, set it back there. Let me get my big scissors. I'll put the camera back on in just a second. I have to bring my chair back and my iPad. So I can see what's happening with everybody. Put that up here. Let's see if we had a comment. Um, <laughs> going long, not a problem. I know. I try to, you know, I, I try to go short, but I can't. I just can't. It's just too much fun. All right, let's put this on me so I can show you. There we go. All right, here I am. And I'm going to move back, move that back a little bit so we can see. And where did I put those scissors now? Ooh, all right, scissors. So this is what it looks like when it comes out. All right. There we go. And hopefully the magic is going to happen. So let me just chop it away first, and then I'll show you. Uh, and I'm just going to cut through all the layers. And about a quarter inch away from the uh, stitching that's there. And then when I get around the bottom, I'm going to show you the bottom. I'm going to leave that open bigger, and then I'll show you what I do there, where that little channel is. And that's not my idea. I got that from someone else, maybe Eleanor Burns or Nancy Zeman or somebody way before me that was doing that. So it's not my, it's not my thing, uh, but I, it's not something I devised. It's something I found, and I really love it. Okay. So I left this kind of big down here. So I am going to trim it along this and down. So, and then I'll clip that corner so it'll turn well. So we'll turn, go in here, we'll go down here and I'll, I'll hold it up in just a minute and show you. Oh, I hope the maid comes tonight to sweep up my floor. She might be too tired, I don't know. All right, so see how I got that all done? And then I just clip the corner right here, just a little bit. A wee bit. This is where you end up cutting into something you don't want to, so just be careful. And then I'm going to reach in here. And I need to reach in. I got I to gotta look first, and then I'll tell you, because I always have to figure it out. All right. I want to reach in between the... Yes, here it is. Between the... Um, if I can get it in the right spot between the front fabric or the back fabric and where the pocket is. So the pocket, I get a, this is the back, this is the back, there's the pocket. So I'm gonna be between those two, okay? And what I do is I go in and get the top corner first. All right, and if you've turned it wrong, then you just turn it back in and try it again. But I pretty, that's, you wanna be between your uh, fabric that is your outside back of your bag and the pocket fabric, which is the front. All right, so let me get to sit down so you don't have to just see my chin. All right, and you're just gonna pull it through that little hole. It's a little harder with the zipper, but it's okay. You'll get it, just take your time. I make that a little bit longer, maybe about a half inch, three quarters of an inch so that um, it's not right at the seam. So if I tear something, it's not the seam I'm tearing. And then I work my way around, pushing the corners out. You can see, look, it's coming. It's coming. Here we go. Let me get this top corner up here. Now, I did this one with the, I've been really loving rounded corners. I don't know why, but I do. All right, so I've got all my corners out. See that? Look at that. And for some reason, something is, oh, I see. In here is the stabilizer for this, where the zipper was. So I can open that carefully. So let me see if I can get in there before I do anything. I've got to make sure all my fabrics are out of the way. Hang on one second. 
it would be easier with the little scissors. And hang on there. I don't want to knock my camera over. It had a big fall the other day. Okay, let me get this zipper part done. This is where you just want to kind of get your little scissors in here and get a little hole so you can see what's going on before you start chopping any fabric. Because you could cut your lining if you're not careful. There we go. Whew, there it is. It's like birth and a baby. I'm like, I'm tired now. Ooh wee. All right, uh, I'll clean that zipper part up in a minute. Here we go. And of course, you can lay it out and press it all nice. Okay, so here the zipper's open. I can get into the zipper. You can see all the red polka dotting on the inside. It's all beautiful. All right, and I just need to cut that open a little bit more. There we go. All right, and there's the pocket, okay? But it's supposed to go on the back. Here's that opening. I'm just going to push it all in like this. I would use, you know, you could whip stitch it. You could put a little uh, fusible, iron it on and close it because it's all going to be in here like this. <laughs> I tell you. And look, there's the back with the pocket. Here's the front. And let me take this off of here. There's my little piece. Uh, tape. And you can see now on the sides, let me see if you can see that. See right there, that little polka dot? That's the, that's what I call the zipper cover. And before you couldn't see it because it was green with my green screen. It does make your bag a little bit smaller, but that's okay. So there you go. I can close it. I can put like keys on that, open it. There we go. All right. And I'll clean all this stabilizer up. But the inside is as neat as can be. No seams. There's the seams. Look at that. No, no seam allowances in there. All tucked in nice and tidy, nice and clean. All right. Let me look here really quick. Uh, <laughs> oh, hi, Dot. How are you? I hope you're doing well at the show. Dot is down at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Show in Hampton Road. So if you're in that way, stop by and ask her, where is Polka? So uh, I'm up here. We're going to be together next week. I cannot wait. We're going to have so much fun. All right. Time flies when you're having fun. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So everybody, I will post in just a little bit. I'm going to review my, um, you know, my directions. Because last month, I think I had a lot of spelling errors and ugh, mess because I was rushing. But I want to make sure everything's good with this. And You'll have directions from last month to pull up to follow along how to create the base bag. And then uh, this week, it sh tells you how to add the parts to do your lining and so that you can have a nice lined bag. Now, you can make your bag in this direction if you want. You can make it bigger if you want. You don't have to have round corners. You can do anything that you want with your bag. You can add embroidery, as I said, here and up here. You could do something fancy with your pocket. So there we go. All right, everyone, I'm going to let you go. Uh, I'm not on the Continental Club tomorrow. It's somebody else over on the Continental Club page. So head over there tomorrow at 3 p.m. so you can see that. And I'll be back next week. I think I'm on um, Wednesday and Thursday. And I may have a special little video for you uh, for that because I'm going to be at a show next week with Dot. And we are at the uh, Sew Expo in Puyallup, Washington. So we'll be having some fun with that. So be sure to stop by if you're in that area. And uh, everybody did good. Oh, see, you could put, you know, well, Anne, you can't take my thunder because we're going to be doing something like that. But Anne said, add another loop and a ring and you could put a strap for a purse. You could actually put them up here. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about adding more things in here. But Anne had a great idea. So if you have great ideas, add them to your bag. Post it either on this page or over on the Genome Artistic Digitizer Facebook group page. We love to see what you're working on. All right, everyone. Have a great day and a nice evening. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now. And thank you for joining me.